Do you know what really grinds my gears? Scalpers. Scalpers have always been part of the music industry, mainly with the live industry. They buy tickets to a show that's going to sell out and then sell those tickets at a massively inflated cost. And nobody likes that. So today I thought I'd take a look at what's happening with scalping, more specifically in relation to guitar gear. I'm going to be looking on reverb and we'll start with a case that's probably the closest to reverb itself. A little while ago, Reverb released a movie. It was about pedals, it was the pedal movie. And to celebrate that, they got a couple of manufacturers to collaborate and release two different pedals. One was the Chase Bliss and Zvex collab, and that was the Bliss Factory, which is kind of like a fuzz. And that retailed for, I think it was $399. And the other one was the Earthquaker Devices and Death by Audio pedal, which was the Time Shadows. And that one was a little bit cheaper. That was $199. It was a thousand pedals each and they sold out within the day. Uh, but not to worry, there are a lot on sale by the people who bought them for a little bit more than what they cost. If you want to buy a used pedal of the $400 one, uh, the cheapest you'll be paying is $500. And that's that was brought down, it was initially $600. The most expensive was over a grand. Uh, that obviously didn't sell, but it's still way inflated. Now thankfully, and this is the important part, people aren't buying these at the inflated prices, specifically because this caused a lot of stress uh, on the manufacturer of this pedal, and they announced that they'd be doing refunds to people who bought them because they were exclusive, because they're gonna make more, just to try and stop this egregious pricing. Unfortunately, I don't think that's happening with the $199 pedal, and there aren't any for sale on Reverb right now, but the ones that were there did sell pretty recently and for massive prices. Scalping is not good, it doesn't benefit the manufacturer, in fact it hinders them, especially in, in this case, uh, but it also hinders your pocket. So don't pay prices for scalped gear, please. This was also very much the case uh, when Eddie Van Halen sadly passed away. Uh, that wall is striped like that for a reason. But of course, uh, just about anything that had the EVH letters or, or stripes on it, for that matter, got a massive price bump. Like, for example, just like an MXR pedal. Reverb's good about having graphs, so you can see the data, and uh, Eddie died in October, and that's the spike. And, and I want to be clear here, right? There's, there's a difference between buying something specifically to flip it, like Trogly or something. There's no problem there, you make a little bit of money on your sales. Uh, and that's just how like a music shop works, right? The next thing I'm gonna show you is probably the what I'd call the king of reverb scalping. Um, it's, it's a seller that you've probably heard of before and we'll get to why in just a minute, but let's just take a look at a random listing from them. Let's say you're interested in a Marshall, right? a signature Marshall, like a, a Marshall Yingvi Mamstein head. Right now, a, a decent one of those in, in okay condition, maybe two and a half grand. Uh, good condition could be upwards of three. So of course the ones that you see on Reverb, they're all around that price for, for what they are, the standard market value of that amp, right? About three grand. Three grand, three grand, three grand, 14, 14 grand. Mm-hmm, okay. So this is the Marshall YMG Yngwie Malmsteen Signature Plexi Amp, artist owned Lana Del Rey Tour flight case. Uh, you don't even get free shipping. Now the thing about asking these types of prices is you really have to sell it and that's what happens in the description. There's a lot of uh, a lot of all cap stuff here. Amazing collector's amp that toured the world multiple times with Lana Del Rey and has been seen by millions of fans. In other words, it was on several planes and thrown around by a lot of baggage handlers. There are many tour cargo stickers on the flight case from Lebanon, Greece, Los Angeles, New York and others. Um, or it could be phrased uh, the same guys who threw the amp around also vandalized the case. The reason that this amp is uh, overpriced by about 11 grand is because it's got the association with a known artist. And I even have some gear that's associated with a known artist. I've never shown this before, but this is a uh, Voodoo Labs GCX rack switcher. I have the foot switch over there. When I was buying this, the, the sale was agreed, and this is this is why I think this story is true. The sale was agreed, I was in the guy's living room just checking that it worked, uh, and I was buying it. And he told me that uh, 
where it came from was he was the roadie on a David Bowie tour. He was working for the guitar player on the tour and after the tour the guitar player gave him this and the foot switch for it. And he gave me the uh, guitar pick from the tour. I think it was like 2009 maybe. I don't know. I had the guitar pick somewhere over there. But the point is this isn't worth anything more or especially not worth more than the overall value of the item because it was used to play David Bowie's music. It doesn't work like that for most people. It's still cool to have, but like, this is not worth more than what the item is actually worth. Now this particular seller does a lot of artist owned instruments and uh, overall gear. And the reason that I said that you may have heard of him before is because he was the guy who purchased the bulk of all the guitars that Dave Mustaine put up on Reverb during his Reverb sale. Quite a lot of harsh press and um, I think kind of deserved. Buying everything within five minutes isn't, you know, it, it's not a nice thing to do. But hey, all the press that was put out was these were going to be used in his studio for people to play with, right? Which is fair enough. Even Dave Mustaine was happy enough to hear that they'd be used by that. Um, but they've been put up for sale since. Now before I show you what prices these are put up at, um, I want to show you what prices they were. So there's a couple of key pieces of gear. Dave, Dave had uh, really reasonable prices. Like these were reachable for a lot of normal people, which was I think very cool on Dave's part. It allowed real fans to get a piece of, of Megadeth history, I guess, for a reasonable price. Like for example, uh, his pedals were, were reasonable. Like the MXR Super Comp here, right? Dave sold it for $75. If you were to resell this, right? Nothing wrong with making double your money, triple your money. It's, it's I could see this pedal going for $300, $400 even. Um, would still be acceptable in the realm of things. Uh, I wouldn't class it as scalping really. But this I would. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to do the maths on uh, on how much of a percentage that is of an increase. I just know it's a ridiculous increase. And that's just with a pedal, okay? So, like, if we take a look at the guitars that Dave was selling, they were all reasonably priced. Like, these were USA Deans. There's some really accessible prices here. Like, for example, this is like a USA Dean double neck. Just under two grand. That's fair priced, especially considering it's owned by Dave, right? Other double neck there, fourteen hundred, um, and it goes on. Like there were there were guitars here that were cheap for what they were. Here's like a, a custom finished one. These are all USA Deans. Like these are the real deal, just over a grand. These are accessible to a lot of people. A banjo, right? Four hundred dollars, right? It's a uh, very accessible to fans of the band, and I think that was really cool. But uh, this particular guy bought all the instruments, and a lot of people didn't like that. But it's still not scalping until you resell them for an extremely hiked price, and that's what's happened. And the thing is, when this was all covered, he hadn't put them up for sale. Um, but now he has, and no one's really talked about it. For example, Here's the prototype for Dave's signature V. It was bought for $2,000. Now, you could double, triple, quadruple your money there and it would still be within the realms of acceptable. Same guitar, 71 grand. <laughs> Who is paying that? And, and the thing is, people are paying that. Like he's already sold his, uh, the double neck for 35 grand. A guitar that cost under two for 35 uh, this is this is scalping this is buying everything not giving a chance to anybody else to get it and then hiking up the price massively like it's it's okay to do I guess it's just um, just a bit of a dick move really and it's happened to all of those guitars from that collection like that guitar was bought for four grand it's 28 28 28 28 they're all like insane prices the the $400 banjo, 21 grand. What? So yeah, listen, um, scalpers only scalp because people pay these prices. So all I'm saying is a banjo for 400, probably um, 
you shouldn't go for 21 grand, you know? Just, just a thought, I guess. So yeah, uh, scalping gear is not cool. Okay? Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.